Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I'm gonna get straight to it. It's almost 4 a.m. and I promised myself that I'll pump out this video no matter what, okay? So let's just jump into it, you guys. Today, we are going to uh, talk about the case study from Despair to Repair 2014 Nissan Altima Key Programming All Keys Lost Success with the IM608 Pro. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Curtis Harden. I'm an independent Alltel consultant. I help align people with their perfect tool strategies and I give them the one-on-one -on -one training that you see in this presentation. So if this is something that you want, head on over to alltelltech.co.za and book the diagnostic tool consultation. All right. Now, what you're gonna be learning today is the following. You're gonna see the tools used in this case study. You're going to understand Nissan's anti-theft system for key coding and resets. And you're going to learn when to perform the NATS registration procedure, as well as my step-by-step -step approach on how to do an all keys lost on a 2014 Nissan Altima. Okay. The tools used in this case study is the IM608 Pro and the Nissan key fob. Okay. We're using two key fobs. And to give you a little background, uh, my client is an ADIS calibration specialist, okay? Now, when I uh, first consulted him, he was doing strictly ADIS calibrations. Then over time, I told him he's gonna need to learn programming, which he did, and then after he learned programming, I told him he's gonna run into uh, key registration procedures. You know, after you, you install a PCM and so forth, you need to register the key. So he's still kind of new at this, all right? But he has the, the, the tools to do it now. So he attempted to register the key. And as he went through the process with the IM608 Pro, he was not able to complete the registration and didn't understand why, okay? So he sought out my expertise to guide him through the NATS registration process, okay? So what is NATS, all right? And I want to dive into this because I feel it's really good to understand each manufacturer's immobilizer system so you'll know your approach and it also will help you troubleshoot, okay? So NAT stands for Nissan Vehicle Immobilizer System, okay? And its core function is it's, it's a security system preventing the engine from being started by an intelligent key that is not registered to the body control module, okay? Now, if you look at the uh, emo generations, okay? The first NATS version was the original system often utilizing basic immobilizer function, okay? Version two had advanced, uh, more sophisticated key recognition uh, systems Okay, version three and four, these introduced a rolling code and increased encryption. Okay, the NAT version five brought in more complex algorithms and synchronized a unique code between the key and the vehicle each time uh, the key was started. Okay, and that's version five, six, and seven. These are subsequent versions that have continued to enhance security, potentially integrating more robust encryption methods and additional layers of uh, security okay so if we look at this diagram here you can see there's the intelligent key with transponder the NATS antenna amp and the BCM okay what's really critical is this guy right here okay uh, this NATS, NATS antenna is responsible for the ID verification between the transponder integrated in the key and the body control module okay it's used to transmit and receive signals during the ID verification process and when the intelligent key uh, backside is contacted to the push button ignition switch, the NATS antenna starts with the ID verification process by transmitting the signal to the transponder. Okay, if the verification results are okay, then the engine will start and uh, you know, you'll be good to go. All right, so that's the workflow. Um, actually, this is the workflow. So first, the driver approaches with the intelligent key. Uh, the key ID is transmitted uh, to the NATS antenna, okay? And it receives the ID. The BCM is gonna verify the key ID, and if the ID matches, 
the signal is sent to the ECM, the starter motor engaged, ECM permits engine ignition, and the vehicle is ready to drive, okay? Um, if it doesn't, okay, uh, the start is blocked and the engine remains off. All right, so that's the workflow. Now, Nissan's dynamic 20-digit pin system. So, in 2013, Nissan introduced the security into the uh, vehicles with this rolling code. It's a 20-digit uh, rolling code that is based on the CAN system, okay? So this means that, you know, if you turn on the ignition, you know, off and on, or if you disconnect your scan tool for whatever reason, you're gonna have a different code, okay? Now, this is probably why when you're doing uh, key registrations with multiple keys, they want you to do it all in one go. Okay, what you're gonna see in this sequence. Like, it's not like some manufacturers where they'll let you add on a key and you know exit out and add on another key. They want you to do this all in one go because as I said, it's a it's a rolling code. So while that rolling code has been you know open for registration, that's when we can add on those keys. Okay. Now, when to do the uh, registration procedure. So anytime you replace a BCM, replace an ECU, or if you're going to introduce new keys to the system, you need to, to go through this procedure. Okay, so let's jump into the remote walkthrough and troubleshooting. So right now I'm just logging into the client's uh, device and I'm seeing the function route that he did. Okay, so from here, I believe he went to remote control learning. All right, and then uh, after remote control learning, he's gonna go to the uh, smart key learning, okay? And then it's gonna have a series of prompts. Now, I wanna ask you guys something. Do you know why, uh, with Nissans in particular, that we have to turn on the hazard switch? Okay, there's two reasons. Okay, one reason is the voltage stabilization. So hazards draw a consistent power to prevent a voltage fluctuation. Okay, that's one reason. The other reason is communication stability. It ensures uninterruption connection between the diagnostic tool and the vehicle's computer. Okay, so that's why it's important to do this. So we're gonna follow the prompts. Click on OK, and then immediately attach a smart key to the push button. Okay, so he's followed the instructions. And then once we get the next prompt, we get this error, initialization of ECU unsuccessful. <clears throat> Possible causes steering has been unlocked, the power switch ignition switch is turned on. If the steering is unlocked status, click next to continue the operation. If it's not, uh, enter the pin. So. I had him test it out. He said the steering is, uh, you know, it's an unlock status. So we click next. Okay. And uh, then it's given us some prompts. Keep pressing the start stop button until the instrument uh, is lit up. Okay. Current status of ignition switch. Is it on or off? If it's on, we're going to click OK. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. All right, and once we do that, we are presented, turn the ignition switch off. Okay, start the key registration preparation. Operate according to the following procedures. Press the start start button once and the button flashes. Contact the logo on the same, I think I'm gonna move this thing here, smart key to the central of the start stop button within five seconds, okay? So we're doing everything that the Altel is telling us to do. And once we do that procedure, and you know, we're gonna go to step two, turn the ignition to the off position, okay? So he's doing all this. All right, I'm walking him through it. And we get a prompt here. Keys are registered to the vehicle on the following memory uh, numbers. All right, to register an additional key, click, key, uh, click add. So you can see we have one registered in the system. 
then uh, we're going to add another one um, uh, as there's two keys okay so I go to memory 2 and we just do the same thing all right so once we do that we get confirmation we have two keys there and uh, now it's gonna go through like it's gonna exit the registration mode all right so this is what you have to do um, so he's doing all of this and on the last step it says check if the remote control is working properly I find out that it's not working okay so this is the method that he used and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to exit all the way out and I'm gonna do it a different path I'm gonna have a different way to do it which is probably what most of you guys would probably do okay so first I'm going to ID the vehicle okay I go to automatic selection and uh, it's going to ID the vehicle turn on the hazards okay we're gonna go ahead and do that and fast for it so I'm gonna go to emo status scan and I'm just going to look at the health of the vehicle okay so as it scans everything it shows our BCM or engine control unit and uh, there's you can see there's no keys into the system and there's our 20 digit authorization code calculation all right it's supported okay so once I've done that my next step is I'm going to select the all keys lost and follow-up prompts and, and follow the prompts okay so let's do that here uh, I'm gonna go to all keys lost all right and then we're gonna follow these steps step one two and three all right so execution this function will erase all the learned keys all right we're gonna go ahead and click OK follow the prompts turn the ignition off turn the hazard warning lamps on and open and close the driver door once okay and with Nissan you have to be like exactly how they say place the back of the smart key against the ignition so that's when he's gonna go ahead and put that back part to the ignition click OK all right checking network and then that part passed now we're on step two the pin verification all right operate according to the following procedures press the push button ignition switch for two seconds or more and turn the ignition switch to the on position okay so I'm waiting for him to do that once he's done that he's gonna go ahead and click OK and we're gonna go ahead and follow the prompts All right, are the ignition and dashboard in normal condition after they are turned on okay he's looking and he's gonna go ahead and click the appropriate answer which is yes all right so establishing vehicle communication now we're gonna to go to the key learning process okay turn the ignition and wait for three seconds one two three we're gonna go ahead and click OK all right press the push button once attach the smart key that needs to be programmed to the push button whether the, whether the instrument lights up automatically okay so we're doing the procedure and I'm waiting for his response and then he's gonna click the appropriate answer based on what he sees, okay? And uh, fast forward it a little bit. Okay, so he clicked yes. All right, program success, continue to program the next one, okay? So we're gonna click yes and we're gonna do the same exact process as we did the first key so turn off the ignition and wait for three seconds one two three press the push button once attach the smart key that needs to be programmed and to the push button all right so he's go ahead and doing that and then once he's done that he's gonna click yes program success continue to program the next one we'll click no turn off the ignition and wait for three seconds okay so the ignition off one two three Key programming has succeeded. Perform the following to check the keys. Open and close the door once. Click the unlock and lock key once. Start the engine and wait for five seconds. Okay. 
So we did those instructions to the T and once we clicked OK, we got confirmation and uh, everything was a success. Okay, now, what was the issue? Okay, what was the issue? What I can say was I think that the function route that my client took gave us a set of menu options that were different from the ones that I used. Okay, um, so for example, I took up a, a snapshot of uh, the function route, the ending of the procedure, what it asks us to do, okay, compared to the one that I did, all right? And you can see here, there's like um, instructions that are a little bit different, okay? And what I want to convey is not all function routes are the same, okay? If you, if you, Auto will have a bunch of like, like it's, let's say options to do certain uh, special functions. But I've noticed that the menus are a little bit different um, depending which function route you take, okay? So I just told my client, look, when you're doing these procedures, just try to render the, the function route that I did for this vehicle and then uh, you know it would eliminate any like headaches like this okay maybe that function route is used on a different procedure but just for doing you know key registrations um, the function route that I did was probably the the one I would recommend people to do okay so in summary understand the vehicle's immobilizer system to navigate key registration approach and troubleshooting okay when you are learning how to do key coding, um, each manufacturer has you know different generations of email systems, and once you understand those systems, you'll know okay, I can do these one through OBD. I can, uh, you know, it's dangerous to do these one through OBD. I have to do it on the bench, so it's good to understand uh, the immobilizer system thoroughly. Okay. Um, Nissan's vehicles over 2013 use a rolling code security system via the CAN bus. Okay, so keep that in mind. Not all paths on the Autel IM608 are paved the same. As I mentioned to you, uh, there's different ways to get the end result and sometimes the menus are a little bit different and you won't be able to have that extra step, you know, that, that's needed to, to do the procedure. All right. And then lastly, hours of persistence met with expertise turned frustration into achievement. So my client was able to, you know, go through his struggle, but with a, you know, click of a, a button, he was able to get a hold of me and I was able to turn this up frustration upside down. Okay. And the opposite of this is, you know, I always tell people, if you're doing something for more than an hour, okay. You don't understand it, all right? And this could, you know, be um, risks involved, missed opportunities, and you can't do this when you're in key coding. You know, you got the client right here on your neck, okay? So collaboration with an expert will always elevate your craft, okay? So if you guys want to get on the right track, you know what to do, head on over to alltailtech.co.za and uh yeah that's that guys i hope you learned something today and uh i appreciate you guys' support with that i'll catch you later and see you in the next one take care